wants to do something in this season in the earth realm. And God says, I'm going to take out of the way every obstruction, every obstacle that's in the way of the next agenda that God is about to move. You see, oftentimes we engage the supernatural in our mind. And that's the biggest uh, a, a problem with the body of Christ. There's too many people who are wise concerning the wisdom of man, but they lack the revelation of the kingdom of God. They have the wisdom of man, they have the know-how and the techniques of man, but they lack the revelation of the kingdom. One time I said here on this altar, how do you recover something that you did not even knew you lost? How do you get back something you did not know was lost in your life? If God had ordained for you to walk into some measure of blessing in some levels of your life and you never manifested it in the earth realm, even though it was in your destiny, how do you tap and recover and restore what you did not even know that was lost in the first place. How do you fight and win a battle that you did not even know you were fighting in the first place? How do you win a battle? Listen, oftentimes we we feel the attack of the enemy that's coming on our lives. Oftentimes you look around you and you start to say to yourself, it looks like some kind of a demonic attack. It's coming on my life, my job, my ministry, my finances. Oftentimes, God will begin to show you by a spirit of revelation that you are under a demonic attack. How about when you are fighting a battle that you did not even know you were fighting? How did you fight an enemy that's hiding so much that you did not even know that it was there? One thing I want you to do tonight, saints, is that we are going to navigate into the God realm. We have an assignment tonight to go to the third heaven. We are not staying surface tonight. We are not meandering tonight. We are putting on the whole armor of God and we are telling God to send fire onto the serpent that's hiding in his inconspicuous rock and God to reveal the activities of the devil that you did not even know was there. Somebody is going to tap tonight into a spirit of revelation and God will make to expose every battle and every war and every onslaught of the devil that's risen up against the well-being of your family and the well-being of your assignment and the well-being of supernatural life center. It does not matter how much they hide. It does not matter how much they camouflage. It does not matter how much they cover themselves in veil and layers and they come against your life in order to strike you when you are most vulnerable. The Lord of hosts will raise up a standard tonight against the works of the enemy. Who am I preaching to God? Will raise a standard. We are not fighting just from the position of talking tonight, but we are fighting from a place of revelation. Every time that we shoot arrows, we are shooting the arrows randomly. We are praying about something you don't even know, you don't understand how it operates. But tonight, the spirit of the Lord says. I'm bringing out and hiding every power of the devil. The Bible says strangers will be terrified and they will run out of their hidden places. I, I want you to hear me tonight. The Bible says submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and you, it will flee from you. And then I say some of you tonight, this is the winning formula for victory. It doesn't matter what level that you are on in your walk with God. This is a parallel formula for you to obtain victory over the works of the enemy. Submit to God, resist the devil. A whole lot of believers, they are busy submitting to God and they are not resisting the devil. They say, so they keep teaching people every week, don't worry, it's going to be good. A little love here, a little love there. A little acts of goodness here, and a little acts of goodness there. A little obedience of the world here, and a little obedience of the world there. And your life's going to be fine, and you're going to be great. You just leave the devil alone. That's half truth. And oftentimes, half truth is a lie. You submit to God. You have to 
submit to God. On the other side, you must resist the devil. So on that side of the church, they are teaching to resist the devil. Every time there's something going on in their life, they say it's the devil. And these folks seem not to care about submitting to God. All they care about night and day is to resist the devil. Now that's half truth again, and half truth is a lie. For you to obtain victory, you have to stay in the balance. And the balance is submit to God and resist the devil. When you submit to God on one hand, resist the devil on the other hand. You cannot resist the devil on your finances if you don't submit to the Lord of God to pay your time and your offering. Submit to God and resist the devil. Am I talking to somebody? I submit to God. I obey the word of God. And I can resist the devil. The Bible says that you will be able to avenge all disobedience. When your obedience is full, the devil is alive. You see, the devil knows too many people more than they know themselves. The devil knows when you are lukewarm. He knows when you are complacent. And that's why many people come to church and they think they can just grab a miracle and go back to their own way of living. They think they can just come to church and just have a little hallelujah and have the man of God sprinkle oil over them. If they go back to living like crazy, you can do that. You have to submit to God. If you want every devil to come out of your life, you submit to God to overcome every generation of curse. Submit to God. If you're not ready to submit to God, what you have is a cycle, a cycle of the demonic infestation that's coming to your life. And that's why many people come to church and their lives get worse and worse. Because now when every demon leaves their body, when they do evil, and the demon is passed out, because they refuse to submit to God. When they come back to see if the person's life was under the blood of Jesus. And when the devil comes back and he sees that this life is not under the blood. My God, the Bible says he goes back and he gets seven demons that are more wicked. My God, you see why you can be playing with the things of the spirit. You cannot be playing with the things of God. You cannot be one leg in and one leg out. You have to submit to God. Oh, come on, you're not hearing me, somebody. When you submit to God, then you will be able to resist the devil. Somebody shout, I submit to God. I can hear you. I submit to the Lord of God. I submit my life under the righteousness of God. I submit my life under the blood of Jesus. I resist the devil. So we have an assignment to submit to God. And then we have an assignment to resist the devil. Look at my eyes everybody. We must resist the devil. Listen to me. We are called to resist the devil. It is not by choice. Okay, you, you see some churches... Where they have intercessors and they have prayer warriors and they, are, they believe that these select individuals, they are the ones that are in the deliverance ministry. But let me say something to you. Every Christian believer has a responsibility to resist the devil. Well, what does it mean to resist? To cast out, to hold your ground against. That's what it means. You have a responsibility to hold your ground against the devil. Why? Because the devil is on a rampage. I want you to hear me. He is not asking for permission in order to attack people. Satan is not consulting with people in order to attack them. My God. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 8 be sober and be vigilant for the devil, your advice. 
adversary like a roaring lion his assignment is to go about looking for who to devour. I'm talking to somebody the devil is out to destroy but my assignment is to stop the works of the devil Jesus said for this reason was the son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me the anointing of my life is to shut down the activities of the money spirit the devil does not take permission to attack people I do not need permission to, to stop the works of the devil and the way I see the works of the devil I'm an agent of the kingdom of God I'm going about stopping the works of the devil the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good healing all those who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him it's my duty to stop the works of the devil. Every Christian believer, we are called to stop the works of the devil. You don't have any other thing to do than to submit to God and then resist the devil. All of your calling as a believer is all wrapped up in those two statements. Submit to God, resist the devil. Period. Submit to God, resist the devil. You are called to shut the devil down. Shut him down in your neighborhood. You, you, it, it is not possible for you to be in the same city and the devil is running loose. Somebody be like, I'm going to mind my own business. Here's the thing. The devil don't mind his own business. The devil makes everybody else's business his business. And my business is to stop the devil's business. And since the devil's business is everybody's business and my business is to stop the devil's business. So my business is to stop the devil's business in everybody's business and that's why I'm in everybody's business that's why I'm going on the highway and on the byway that's why I'm preaching the gospel on television that's why I'm preaching the gospel on the radio that's why I'm preaching the gospel on the Facebook that's why I'm preaching the gospel money service evening service 21 days that's why I'm here every single night because that's my job as a Christian believer that's your job the spirit of the Lord has anointed you to shut down the works of the devil. I gotta shut it down. I got I shut it down tonight. Come on, somebody. I say I shut it down tonight. <laughs> I shut it down tonight. Every witchcraft spirit. I shut it down tonight. Every operation of the devil. Every hiding power. Every demonic spirit. I shut it down tonight. Spirit of depression. I shut it down tonight. Every gathering together of warlords. I shut it down tonight. Every mind control of demonic powers. Every sorcerers. Every diviners. Every star readers. Every Every psychic doctors, I shut it down tonight. I shut it down in your life. I come in the name of the Lord. I know my job. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The power of God is within me. The glory of the Lord is upon me. I come tonight in the name of the Lord to shut down the works of the enemy in Toronto. I shut it down in Canada. I shut it down in supernatural life center and shut it down in your family in your ancestry in your generation in your finance on your job every work of the devil for this reason was the son of God made me feel that he might destroy the works of the enemy and shut it down every activity of sickness spread of depression and shut it down affliction I shut it down every power that's afflicting your dream I shut it down every power that's holding you down I shut it down every sorcery every power that's calling your name in the bed of the night I shut it down the one throwing hours against your glory I shut it 
God, generation has spirit, I shut it down for this reason, for the Son of God may reveal to destroy the works of the enemy. It's not possible for me to be here and the devil's power is moving freely in this city. It can't happen. The devil is a liar. You are anointed to shut it down. The anointing on your life. That's the anointing on your life. Some of you, because some people know you, they can die. Because God will tell you on time. The spirit of death is about to come on that person. The spirit of the Lord will show you in a dream. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. That's our assignment. That's our job. How many gatekeepers are here tonight? How many people have the anointing of the Holy Ghost to shut down every work of the devil in the life of family, in the life of singing, in the life of sex, in the life of your children, in the life of your grandchildren, everywhere the devil gathers. I know my job. Shut it down. Somebody help me say shut it down. Then I shut it down. Every walk of the devil. I shut it. In the name of Jesus. The church has been sleeping for too long. And the devil has been running rapid too long. But there's an army of God that's rising up right now. We can't let that continue. We have to shut it down. Some of you tonight, when God is done blessing you, when God is done moving things around in your life, you're going to go home and every devil and every speed of oppression, every speed of destruction, every power that's been on the generation, every power that's been in your family, everything that you've been fighting, every night in your dream, they will never be able to raise up their head anymore. Because right now, we come in the strength of the Lord. And we shut it down. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. I release the fire of the Lord. All over the building. I release the fire of God. All over this building. From the right to the left. I shut down every power of the enemy. I arrest every strong man. I pull down every operation. From the spirit of the underworld, I come tonight in the name of the Lord. I shut it down in the name of Jesus. I shut it down every power of darkness. The name of miracle, I shut it down. Don't say it's here. Can I see ten people here tonight? The Spirit of the Lord said, can I see 70 people here tonight? The Spirit of the Lord said, can I see 80 people here tonight? That are going to raise up themselves in the power of God. And when I count one to three, you're going to make a noise of victory. And you're going to release a prayer language. You're going to shut down every power of the enemy. You're going to lift up a standard in the name of the Lord. Every hour of the devil, you're going to shut it down. In the next three minutes, you're going to make your noise. You're going to let the heavens hear you. You're going to let the earth hear you. You're going to let every devil in the pit of hell hear your voice. Enough is enough. Are you ready? One, two, three, go! Shout! Shout Zion! Shout Zion! Shout for the victory! Shout for the victory! Shout for the victory! Shut it 
if you are not careful, the tricks of the devil with the future. I want you to hear that. The devil does not attack believers on the grounds of power. He attacks believers on the grounds of deception, tricks. Lest the devil For we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, so the first one says, it doesn't matter what he does, he can never do it. I've given you a power. The God of peace will bruise the devil on the little feet. His power is already in the field. That's the first round of it. That's the power side. But the, 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 the devices, the trickery side, he says now it's your duty to be careful. It's your duty to be watchful, be sober. Be vigilant because this devil, he uses tricks. I want to take you back into the book of Genesis. I don't know how many times the devil tried to invade the garden of Eden, but the garden was protected by God. He was covered by God. It was a present place. The presence of God was there. And that plan of the devil failed. I want you to hear me. So what he does, man of God, is he comes into the garden in form of a serpent. Do not worry over the devil's power, but be wary of the devil's streets. I want you to hear that. So the Bible says it comes through Eve, a spirit of deception. And says, is it true the Lord of God, man, has told you not to eat any of the fruit of the garden? And then the Eve began to engage the devil in a conversation. So that Eve is the most deadly spirit that's moving on the body of Christ today, okay? It's the most deadly societal spirit, woman of God, that's coming against the people of God. Now, because that spirit is a camouflage spirit. Now, I'm going to help you today so that you can, by the spirit of God, expose every activity of the devil. You know, when I started this service, I told you, I said, listen, sometimes you are fighting a battle that you are aware of. Because the devil is coming frontal against you, frontal attack. But when he comes in a camouflage, he comes in a spirit of deception. When he comes through his serpentine form, he becomes difficult for you to even identify that Satan is moving in the first place. Now hear what God said to tell somebody. Every activity of the serpentine spirit that's locking its way around you, I declare and decree it is hereby exposed and displayed. Yeah. What is the serpentine scheme of Satan very effective? I want you to hear this. I'm going to tell you three to five reasons, and we're going to get in a prophetic intercession tonight. Number one, the snake always has an appearance of deception. It carries on it the look of the opposite of its intent. Oh, I just said something right there. The Bible says having a form of godliness. of people's life. Because Satan has a data bank where he keeps the DNA of people. Your ancestry, your proclivity, your likes, your dislikes, where you lie, where you sit. He's a snake. A snake is very deceptive. What it does is it crawls its way gradually into you. Okay, come on somebody. And gains your confidence and makes you to unarm yourself. And to feel comfortable with your enemy. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. Listen, so enemies come at you in your face. They shout at you from a distance. Are you with me? They yell your name. They tell you that we don't like you that much. They tell you that we don't like you, God. We tell you to pull you out of this place. We're going to get you out those kind of enemies. Be grateful for them. Am I talking to somebody right now? Just thank God that I know XYZ is 
you know, on a mission to destroy me. So, so that when I wake up in the morning, I can cover myself with the blood. Listen, if I knew that you don't like me, and then you give me water to drink. Be like, thank you, Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Where's the washroom? When the enemy comes like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. I don't even want to know if it's, if it's good or not. When I know you don't like me, I am prepared. But when the spirit of the snake is at work, I'm talking to the spirit right now. It comes slowly but surely. It settles in your system. Oh God, help us here tonight. It gains your confidence. It, 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 it tells you, don't worry, baby, it's going to be fine. Everything, I'm here for you. I'm here through the thick and the thin. And many of us, we are telling our enemies our deepest secret. And they use it against you. A spirit of the serpent. Don't worry yourself about the demon coming from But you cannot tell God every snake that's hiding in my life. Every snake that's hiding in my ministry. Every snake that's hiding in And she took the money and betrayed Samson. Yes. The Bible says Jesus was in among his disciples and Judas Iscariot was there. Uh -huh. how, how is it that, listen to me, if you have, one, 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 one man of God said, he said Jesus had a church of 12 people and he had 
he had one, one devil amongst them. He said, so if I have 10 devils in my church of 500, he said, that, that's a good number. <laughs> Jesus had, he had devils in his church. The Bible says that for a, a 30 piece of silver, he sold the Lord. And, and, and did you know, people of God, that when Jesus gave the church, the disciples the power to heal the sick, Judas was amongst them. When he sent them out two by two and said, go and heal the sick. Do you know, my God, that Peter, I mean Judas Iscariot, he went amongst the two. He went from house to house and said, I come in the name of the Lord. Do you have any sick person here? Bring them out. We come in the name of Jesus. Jesus has given us power. And he was praying over the sick. And they were getting healed. Now, and I want you to hear this. Because the Bible says that angels of darkness, they come as angels of light. That's why if you don't have any gift of the spirit, you tell God, give me the gift of the discernment of spirit. I want to be able to discern what spirit is working in this place. Come on somebody. Because we are living in dangerous days. In fact, let, let me say to you, the people that are playing with darkness, they are bitter in their packaging than the people who are walking in the light of God. The snake comes in unawares. Most victims of snake bite, they say they never knew until they were actually hit. But some of them said when they were hit, they thought it was just a little prick on their skin. It was when they started to swell. My God, you're not hearing me, people. Amen. When they started to stretch and swell and have all these uncomfortable symptoms that they knew they'd been hit with the fatal blow of the serpent, it comes on our ways. Do not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. Many times the Holy Ghost will begin to give you signs about certain place and certain persons and you begin to ignore. You let your mind get in the way of what God is saying. And you begin to doubt God. You begin to say to God, Lord, no, Lord. No, Lord Jesus, I know better than you, Lord. I know, I know him better, Lord. I know him better, Lord. God says, listen, be careful. Some of you, you feel a heaviness. You want to go somewhere and then you feel a heaviness. And God is cautioning you, is, is telling to you, do not go. But you get your back. Go. Even sometimes the Lord have to get your, 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 your car, you know, to lose the tires. You still wait on the road and fix your tire. But I must go. The Bible says Balaam, he, had, he liked the sun. And the angel of the Lord stood in front of the donkey and said, prophet, you will not go. But the prophet kept hitting the, 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 the donkey until the donkey spoke and the, and the prophet saw the angel that was there. You have to be discerning. You have to say to God, open the eyes of my understanding. And let me see the activities of this demon that's locking around me. Everybody that's sitting here tonight, there is a demon of deception that's hanging in one area or the other in your life. You gotta tell God, expose it tonight. Someone say, expose it tonight. Say, Father, expose it tonight. Say, expose it tonight. The activities of the snake, expose it tonight. The activities of familiar spirit, exposure to that. Spirit that are familiar with me, spirit that I'm familiar with, spirit that are plotted against the rise of my anointing, the rise of my glory. People that whenever somebody break up with me, they are the first person that I tell that they are still the person that sabotaging my relationship. Expose them! Number two, the activity of the serpent is to give you uh, 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 the bite of a, of, 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 of a poison, a poisonous bite, the sting of death. It bites with the sting of death. You see, if you were hit by a lion, you would know that you just got hit by something. And the chances if you survive, you really rush to the hospital. But if a snake I want you to hear this. We are to bite somebody. It is so subtle that you did not even know you'd been bit. My God, are you with me, somebody? Yeah, and then when what, what the serpent does is it bites you, and then it makes it look easy, and then it bites again, and then it bites again, and then it sends the venom. I want you to hear. This. 
It sends the venom into every fiber of your being because it flows through your bloodstream. God forbid. It flows through the bloodstream and the person now begins to, glory to God, have a fatal blow that if you don't get the vaccine on time, it could be fatal death. That's what the devil does. Many people have been bitten by the spirit of the serpent and the injury has filtered into every fiber of their system. There are many serpents that come to break marriages. They come to break churches. And they lock in and pretend like they belong with the people of God. We all lift up only hand. If that is sing to me and say, if the serpent noise is louder than everybody's noise, give him the glory. But you know what? When everybody's gone home, they pick their phone. Pum, 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 pum. They call uh, Sister A. Did you hear what is going on in our ministry? Let's be praying. You know, when some people call you to gossip, they, they put prayer at the end. I just want to tell you what I'm feeling about, but anyway, I just want you to pray about it. Why spread it at all? That's the bite of the serpent. Am I talking to somebody? If you want to pray, you pray. If you want to gossip, you gossip. Let's stop mixing prayer with gossip. That's the spirit of the serpent. Am I talking to somebody right now? And some people are beat with the venom. They said, this person said this about you. God, I was there. I heard it. I saw it. I turned around. I rose my feet. I said, Jesus. What are you doing, Dad? Sister, I don't know. We need to pray for this sister. We don't know what's going on in this ministry. The devil is a liar. But guess what? They're going to call the next person. Pum, 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 pum. Hello, sister. Oh, my God. What I'm hearing about you in the choir. Hmm. You need, you need to be in prayer. Are you in the prayer? Because what I'm about to say to you right now is so dangerous. They call brother. Pum, 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 pum. See, brother, the, the sister, see, the way she was looking at you during worship. Hey, do you have anything against each other? I don't know. They plan the evil of discord. And before you detected that poison as eating your sister, am I talking to somebody right now? Be sober, be vigilant. Because this serpent, they're everywhere. You don't know you've been hit by the serpent poison. You still think you are walking in the spirit of God. And you still think, oh my God, I'm trying to be nice. But you just been hit by a spirit of deception. The assignment is to paralyze people. It's to wreck relationships. It's to wreck the church of God. It's to plant this God amongst the brethren. That certain people, it does not matter how peaceful a church is. Give them two weeks. They will, they will paralyze their peace in that ministry. Only how many weeks? Three. Kenneth Hagin said, I, I planted a church for 10 years. He said, what the devil could not do in 10 years in that church? One brother did in 10 hours. <laughs> what the devil could not do for how long? 10 years. He, he, he succeeded to tear the place down. He, he succeeded every serpent spirit. They talk to you like, everything is okay. We love you. We are praying for you. There is no one like you. Surely you are the greatest. Your gift is mighty. Your glory is shining. We need God to cover our eyes. From the radiance of your glory. But mind you, behind you, the thing is the only one. You gotta be careful. The spirit of the serpent. Say, I'm bind. Say, say with me, say, I'm bind. Every poison. every poison, say it again, say every poison, every poison. Of, snakes of snakes in my life, in my life. I, declare I declare the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus against, against the power, the power of, the of the serpent. The Bible says in the book of Acts of Apostle that after Paul, the servant of the Lord, had escaped the wreckage of the sheep, he just had a shipwreck. And the word of the Lord says, I want you to hear me say it. As Paul the apostle was gathering sticks in order to warm himself, a serpent came out of the sticks and he fastened itself on the hand of Paul. I come to tell somebody tonight in the name of Jesus, every serpentine spirit that has fastened itself on your hand, fastened itself on your job, fastened itself on your church, Many churches will still have gathered together today, if not for this serpent. 
They go about destroying homes, destroying marriages, destroying peace. They go about taking the glory from people. They go about slaying young men. We declare their power is broken. Yeah. The Bible says, look at my eyes. The snake fastened itself to the head of Paul. And then when people saw Paul, that was as he was bitten by the snake. And they, 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 they looked at him from afar. So, wow! This man is going to surely swell up and he will bust open and die. He, he must die a surely death. But the Bible says Paul did something. He shook it off into the fire. I want somebody to say, I shake it off. God is calling you to the higher ground. Amen. And right now, every serpent spirit that's trying to poison your spirit, shake it off. Shake it Look at me, say, shake it off. Shake it off. I can't say, shake it off. Shake it off. Say, right now. Right now. Say, right now. right now. In the name of Jesus, I walk, I walk in the spirit of revelation. I walk in the spirit of clarity. I walk in the wisdom of God, I shake off. You gotta shake it off because it's coming from behind. You gotta do what? Shake it off. Shake it into the fire. The Bible says Paul shook it in the fire. And women of God, what happened? They looked at Paul and they said, Surely this man is a God because he shook it off. Somebody's here tonight. The moment that you leave this building, the power of the Holy Ghost is now coming strong upon your life. Amen. And all the camouflage that's in your life that's blocking you, hallelujah, from seeing clearly the will of God and from stepping to your destiny, God expose them. Amen. Somebody gets you and they say, shake it, shake it off. Now I want you to do a prophetic sign. Get up on your feet, everybody. Do it like this. Say right now. I want you to do it right now. Right now. In, the In the name of Jesus. The venom, the venom and the poison, and the poison of, the of the serpent in my sister, I, I shake it off into the fire. I don't know how the Holy Ghost is going to do it, woman of God. But tomorrow morning, some people begin to call you and they say, What's going on? I, I, I want to confess. Am I talking to somebody right now? Some people are going to call you and they say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I got to confess. Because I could not sleep at night. The power of God came on me. And I got a confession to me about all the things I've been doing in your life. I got to confess. Because I want you to pray for me so that I can have peace. Because God says that I He set a fire upon every serpent demon. Get ready, get ready, get ready. There's a spirit of revelation that's coming on the church right now.